My name is Penny Peck, and I currently um, am the president of the Eden Area League of Women Voters, but I'm also the vice president of the San Lorenzo School Board. Throughout our history, the League of Women Voters, which is 98 years old, has been providing opportunities for candidates seeking public office to take their case directly to the voters. League candidate forms are an expected part of political campaigns for every level of public office. We have a long-standing reputation for fair, unbiased, and competent service to voters. The purpose of this forum is to provide voters with information that will help them make an informed choice when they cast their ballots. The League of Women Voters promotes political responsibility through informed and active participation of citizens in government. The League is a nonpartisan political organization, which means that although we often do advocate for uh, positions on public issues, we do not ever support or oppose any political party or any candidate. This forum is part of our voter education service to the public. Our candidate forums and interviews are controlled by the League and not the candidates. Before we begin, there are a few things I'd like to share about how we will proceed. The candidates received all of this information ahead of time. This will be a one-hour forum. All candidates will have one minute to make an opening statement, and the order has been determined by drawing numbers. During the opening statements, our assistants will be walking around the audience that's here to pick up questions that you want to submit, and you write them on cards. All questions must be in the form of a question and not a statement. The questions will be delivered here to my friend Renee, who's sorting the questions and just ensuring that they fit with our, um, the way we run our forums. And we want to cover a wide variety of issues during our time. We'll try, but we may not get to every question. And in my experience, several people will ask a question on a similar topic and will sometimes kind of compile those into one question on that topic. Uh, we will conclude with a two-minute closing statement from each candidate. Um, I said one more thought on the questions. Don't forget that we're going to ask both candidates the same questions throughout. We rotate who goes first. So when you're asking a question, don't spe specify it has to be for one or the other. We're going to ask both of them the question or we won't ask it at all. Um, our timekeeper is Iwa Zielinski. She'll keep track of the time and signal candidates when there's 15 seconds left with a yellow light. And uh, our friend Linda Foster, she'll hold up uh, the paddles to remind you when it's 15 seconds left with yellow and then, of course, the stop sign with red. Same with the colors on our timer right here in front. Green for go, yellow is 15 seconds, red is stop. Um, in the interest of serving voters, we've cautioned candidates to refrain from negative attacks of each other, and for the same reason, we expect the audience to give each speaker an opportunity to be heard. This is not a town hall format. We don't take comments directly from the public, don't stand up and shout out to the candidates, and also please hold your applause to the end. And now that you're familiar with the format, I want to introduce our candidates. Candidate number one is Mark Salinas, and candidate number two is Barbara Halliday. So we will begin with one minute opening remarks, and we'll begin with Mr. Salinas. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, wanted to uh, thank everybody for coming out uh, tonight on a Thursday night. Um, and I also wanted to thank the League of uh, Women Voters for putting on another great uh, forum uh, for the community. Um, I was born and raised in Hayward, and I'm proud of being born and raised in Hayward. I was born at St. Rose Hospital. I grew up in the Schaefer Park neighborhood, and I have lived the entire Hayward experience. Went through Hayward schools. I've lived in almost all of the, uh, all the neighborhoods in Hayward, from Fairway Park to the Hayward Hills to Second Street to downtown and, uh, and the Eldridge neighborhood. And so... Um, I think I can speak to the Hayward experience from a very personal, intimate way. I do not want to miss another time. 
I don't want to miss another opportunity in the, city, in the city of Hayward. I want to have a balanced budget that is equitable, that everybody is, uh, uh, contributes to our budget and, okay, there you go. Thank you, Ms. Halliday. For the past 14 years, I, uh, and the past four as mayor, and before that as a city council member, I have worked very hard to create a city government here that is responsive to the people it serves, our residents, uh, our neighborhoods, our businesses, uh, workers who work here and uh, to make it responsive and to partner with all of them to solve problems and to improve the quality of life for all of us. Together, we have accomplished a great deal. We ha have added hundreds of new housing units. We have added good jobs in our industrial in and commercial districts from advanced industries that, that do provide good jobs and invest in technology. Uh, we have done so much on the environment uh, and in other areas, and I would really like to keep working on these issues for the next four years, and I would be honored if the voters gave me a chance to do that on November 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you, after I ask these questions, if you need me to repeat them, please don't hesitate to ask. All right. My first question is about Measure T, which is on the November ballot. And as you all know, but I'll repeat this for the audience, it would increase the real property transfer tax from $4.50 to $8.50 per 1,000 to fund city services like 911, firefighters, library hours, and repairing streets and sidewalks. Are you in favor or opposed to Measure T and why? So we'll begin first with Mr. Mr. Salinas. Um, I am the one council member uh, on the city council that has voted to not put Measure T on the ballot. And the reason why I do not, uh, I voted no to put it on the ballot is because I believe Measure T unfairly and disproportionately taxes new and young home buyers and sellers in the city of Hayward. We are sending a mixed message to the folks in Hayward. On one hand, we're trying to promote housing and we're trying to promote home buying and home purchasing, particularly with new home buyers. But on the other hand, we're making it more difficult for people to buy homes. And so, um, you know, it's uh, uh, Measure T, the real property transfer tax, is the tax that property sellers and buyers, or uh, the seller and the buyer, pay right at the end of the transaction. And so after families have already saved and cobbled enough money for a down payment, at the last moment, at the 10th, in, in, at the 10 yard line, nope, there it goes. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Halliday. About a year ago, the city council got together for an all-day work session to look at the projected bu budget deficits. We've done a lot to close those deficits and, in fact, have been, have been balancing our budget the last two years and expect to do that this year. However, we have a structural deficit because of the long-term liabilities uh, for our employee benefits and so uh, that we can't change. So we got together and we came up with a very broad strategy to address these issues. Much of that include asking our included asking our employees for greater concessions after they have already given many in the last few years. Um, but part of the strategy too is to look at how can we somewhat increase revenues. The real property transfer tax is an existing tax that has not been you know raised in many years. We are among the lowest uh, in the county of those who have that tax, and we're really kind of bringing it up to up to the even still lower than the normal level, but raising it to be a part of that solution that we have so many other components of to uh, eliminate our structural deficit in our budget. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question um, is one I am sure they're asking every mayoral race in the Bay Area. What have you done or what would you propose to do about affordable housing here in Hayward? And Ms. Halliday, you'll begin with that. Well, I 
have worked hard for 14 years to support affordable housing and have, have been part of approving many projects. Uh, and there were many before. Eden Housing is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. And, you know, they um, have built a lot. Right now in Hayward, there are hundreds, perhaps thousands of people living in permanently affordable housing. And we are continuing to work with our affordable housing developers. Just Tuesday night, we uh, voted, we uh, moved forward almost $30 million worth of uh, affordable housing that we are using our own money collected through our inclusionary housing rules uh, and from our former redevelopment agency, along with funds from the county through Measure A1, which the voters passed. So we are working very hard to, to build more units in Hayward so that families and homeless people and people with disabilities and people with addictions, places for them to live. Thank you. Mr. Salinas. You know, when I got on the city council in 2010, um, one of the biggest, uh, newest projects we approved uh, and I supported was the South Hayward uh, BART development, which was uh, 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 partnered with Eden Housing. Um, another housing development that uh, I participated to uh, vote to uh, work through and vote for was the senior housing development right behind this building, behind the BART station. And um, when I came back to the city council in 2016, um, we continued, I continued to support every single chance and every opportunity I had to put more housing uh, on the market for extremely low income and low income families. I have been there and I have voted uh, yes for and I have supported. Um, the other uh, uh, you know, strategy that I have used and deployed has been to uh, keep developers uh, accountable to building accountable or building affordable housing in any uh, new developments, and I think as we move forward, uh, we will see that happen. Thank you. We're going to begin now with Mr. Salinas. Um, do you think protecting the environment is a priority here in Hayward, and is Hayward doing a good job of that? What would you do more of or less of to protect the environment? Absolutely, we've uh, we're doing a lot in terms of protecting the environment. When I was on the city council between 2010 and 2014, um, I was I sat up here and voted for one of the largest uh, solar projects in the city of Hayward, where uh, now our water treatment plant is completely powered by solar energy, and uh, a lot of the residual energy that is produced through the through that uh, technologies is dispersed throughout uh, the city of Hayward to power other buildings in the city of Hayward. Um, our library uh, is, you know, one of the most um, LEED certified, highest level of LEED certified um, uh, environmental um, uh, buildings that, you know, uh, probably in Northern California in terms of a library. And so I, uh, I you know, supported that and made sure uh, uh, that was, that gets built. Um, so absolutely, I'm committed to the Climate Action Plan. I'm committed to everything that we are doing up here uh, on the City Council. I certainly have supported everything since I've been on the City Council since 2010. Thank you. Ms. Halliday. Uh, the top priorities of the Hayward City Council for many years now have been safe, clean, green, and thriving. And green is a very important part of that of that formula there. Uh, and we have done, we are a leader in this area in that regard. We have significantly reduced our greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, the big, uh, we are, waste, our water pollution control facility, which used to be the biggest user of municipal energy, is now producing more energy than it uses, sending it back to the grid, and we're about to triple the solar array that is part of what is making that happen out there. Uh, we are also a leader in water conservation. Uh, we have, we had one of the lowest targets to meet as a city uh, when the, we had the drought a couple years ago, and we tripled that. And we are keeping Keeping plastic and other unwanted objects out of the bay, we're doing one of the best jobs in the Bay Area to keep things out of the bay that shouldn't be there with new uh, catchment devices at our water pollution control facility. We're doing many other things as well that I don't have time to talk about. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we're going to begin with Ms. Halliday. Both you and Mr. Salinas are longtime leaders here in Hayward, in the government. So tell us about how you would lead the city council, how you would work with those colleagues, both 
what you have done and what you plan to do, to be an effective leadership team. Uh, I'm starting here. Uh, uh, I truly believe that partnerships are the only way we're going to get anything done. And I have partnered with many people and groups throughout the city to get things done. One example is the rebuilding of the old Eden Youth and Family Center, a very tired old school building that is costing too much to run at this point and which desperately needs to be rebuilt. When I came in, that project was really stalled. I immediately started working very closely with Supervisor Richard Valle to get the money needed to um, spearhead that project and we are now well underway. We have just selected an architect and you'll be hearing some exciting new plans for that project. That's just one example of how uh, I have worked with leaders, other leaders throughout this entire city and I'm very proud to have the support of four of my colleagues on city council in this election because we together we are working as a team to move the city forward. Thank you. Mr. Salinas. Well, you know, when I was elected in 2010, um, I, uh, one of the very first things I did was I reached out to uh, some of my colleagues and we started the uh, teach-ins here at City Hall. Uh, we did uh, uh, teach-ins around social justice issues and we did teach-ins around uh, issues concerning uh, diversity. Uh, in fact, one of the uh, first things I did was I reached out to uh, Ms. Halliday and we started the uh, Hayward uh, Women's uh, Teach to honor hey uh, to honor Women's History Month, and so uh, and I think those were uh, successful events, and uh, I look forward to doing that uh, more in the future. Uh, another um, uh, partnership uh, that we have uh, that I have done with uh, not only with the council but also with staff uh, with through the uh, Pub Hayward Public Library, uh, we launched Words for Lunch, where we connected uh, kids to uh, literacy and nutrition activities during the summer when school's not in session. So from the get-go, since I've been up here, I have worked not only with the council and colleagues on special projects, I've, I've also worked with staff. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to switch gears. Totally different subject. How are decisions made regarding cannabis, cannabis dispensaries in the neighborhoods here in Hayward? And we'll begin with Mr. Salinas. I'm sorry, repeat the question? How are decisions made regarding cannabis dispensaries in neighborhoods here in Hayward? Uh, well, decisions are made, well, first of all, the cannabis issue in Hayward, I don't think we ever had a community meeting uh, where there was neighborhood input uh, about cannabis. Most of the decisions that occurred happened right here in this room uh, while we uh, put together uh, an ordinance. Uh, and so, um, you know, uh, so I, I think that's the, uh, there has been very little community the input about um, uh, cannabis. Most of the input that I have received uh, from cannabis or concerning cannabis has been my involvement with the Kids Breakfast Club, my involvement with the Hayward Promise Neighborhood, working with families and kids, uh, working with uh, Words for Lunch and Fresh Food for Families, where every day I interact with parents and with children uh, who have expressed extreme concern about uh, an industry coming into our city, but more so how an industry has been essentially concentrated in one neighborhood, and that's downtown. Thank you. Ms. Halliday. In uh, the fall of 2016, when it became uh, evident that the state was likely going to pass the proposition that legalized cannabis in California, uh, the city of Hayward put a measure on the ballot to say, if we have cannabis businesses in Hayward, can we tax them? And uh, and the, our voters, not all, pretty substantially, substantially, about 60%, passed both of those initiatives, the statewide one and the tax for Hayward. So the city staff immediately began working on developing very rigorous uh, regulations to, um, to implement uh, cannabis in Hayward. Uh, we have now approved businesses, but we have not yet approved any land uses for those cannabis locations. I joined the rest of my colleagues in banning, in voting to 
keep all of keep new business, cannabis businesses out of our neighborhoods and concentrate any re retail in the downtown. Uh, Council Member Salinas voted against that that plan to remove it from the neighborhoods. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, Proposition 10, first you can give your opinion whether you're for or against it. It's about um, rent control, and rent control is a hot issue. Um, what would you institute if Proposition 10 passes? What kind of rent control um, initiatives might be your first steps? And I think we'll begin with Ms. Halliday, correct? Given that uh, Costa Hawkins, which would be repealed um, if Prop 10 passes, was passed um, in 1995, I believe, and and, uh, and and banned new housing after that from uh, having rent control, Hayward does have a rent control ordinance that uh, applied to residents before that. Um, and so, um, uh, if Proposition 10 passes, I think first we need to approach this like we have approached uh, rental housing inspection. We need to look for the bad actors and make sure they are not mistreating residents. And to do that, we need to collect information. I think one of the big issues around rent is um, evictions, and we need to strengthen uh, laws that protect tenants from un. un um, warranted evictions from their homes because that can have a devastating impact on uh, families and can really destabilize communities. So I would look at evictions and at collecting information to see what we can do to keep those who are really taking advantage of low-income renters from doing that. Thank you. Mr. Salinas. So let me be very clear about this. I look forward to voting for Prop 10 so that we can bring local control back to the city so that we can develop an ordinance that protects seniors and protects renters uh, in the city of Hayward. Uh, if Prop 10 passes, which I hope it does, if Prop 10 passes, I look forward to, to uh, building a type of, well first, having input come from both landlords and build in property owners and tenants. But I do support building a rent stabilization ordinance that reaches across uh, age uh, income levels, that reaches across um, neighborhoods, and that we uh, go after uh, and, um, and ensure that um, that people have clean, safe, affordable places to live. Prop 10 is not based out of evictions. Prop 10 is based out of it's too expensive to live in Hayward and other places. Thank you. Um, I think this time we begin with Mr. Salinas. Um, do you support campaign finance laws, for example, is it appropriate for candidates to accept large donations from developers or property owners? Why or why not? Uh, absolutely. Do I, you know, uh, do I support uh, campaign finance and transparency and in, in, in contributions and in campaigns? Absolutely. And I think uh, every campaign uh, finance uh, ordinance and uh, legislation that we have had on this dais, uh, I have voted for. Uh, we uh, and so absolutely, um, you have folks that uh, receive contributions from every union. Uh, you know every. Uh, political organization, every political pack, every, uh, you know, there's, you have people that get money from all of these places. And then you get candidates that, re, you know, that receive, that don't get endorsed by all these other organizations and go to uh, friends and family uh, for support. And so as long as all campaign contributions are reported and, uh, and, and, and all campaign contributions are, are transparent and people know where candidates are getting funded, I support. Thank you. Ms. Halliday. Hayward has a very good campaign finance law uh, for candidates. Uh, it limits, it, it, it is voluntary, but most candidates do agree to abide by it. It limits 
the amount of money you can spend on a campaign and it limits the amount of donations from each individual and I strongly support that. It was enacted just prior to my joining the council. Recently we strengthened campaign finance laws around ballot initiatives so that um, it requires more transparency, full disclosure of who is actually paying for these issues. There are um, state and federal laws governing uh, what you can and can't do uh, around campaign finance so I think that um, you know we have gone about as far as we can go maybe and I think it works well and we don't really have to raise nearly as much as they do in other jurisdictions to run for office uh, and I think that I always have tried to follow the law to the letter and in the spirit too by not but taking bundle contributions from say one family of property owners um, such as my opponent has done. Thank you. Our next question is on economic development and we'll begin with Ms. Halliday. Economic development is the lifeblood of a healthy city. So what will you do to make sure we have thriving business districts throughout all of Hayward? Well, we have many business districts in Hayward, and they are starting to thrive. I think people really comment on how this downtown, we still do have some empty storefronts, but it's changing. You can see it. And there's an excitement downtown here, especially on Friday and Saturday nights. In our industrial district, we have not only added new businesses, and new businesses with high-paying jobs that you know use advanced technologies, but we have partnered with the businesses who are out there when they want to improve things. We've started something called the concierge program in our economic development department where uh, a member of that team partners with the business and helps them work through expansion plans or development plans and many businesses, I go to a lot of ribbon cuttings and I almost always get thanked for um, uh, the staff, the, the cooperation and help that the businesses received from our staff uh, to help them get to where they were. So I would continue those efforts. Thank you so much. Mr. Salinas. Um, you know, we do have a great economic development uh, department, and um, and I wanted to uh, you know thank them for all of their hard work uh, around town. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, new uh, retailers and, and businesses open up. Southland is certainly uh, is coming along, um, but uh, what I uh, what I see a mayor doing is listening to other retailers. It's listening to the neighborhoods. And it's listening to neighborhoods to as to what they would like to see in Hayward. Uh, I think one of the um, big misses that we've had is that we have taken a retailer like cannabis and we have taken it and struck it out every other neighborhood in the city of Hayward and we stuck it in downtown. I have not, you know, there has been not, there hasn't been one retailer in downtown, one um, a merchant in downtown that has come to me, given me a big hug and said, Mark, Mr. Salinas, thank you for bringing cannabis next to my business. So it's listening to uh, neighborhoods and is listening to merchants as to what is appropriate for the neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Halliday, did you start yes. that question? Oh, good. <laughs> well, this one is sort of related. It's also on economic development. So I'll begin with Mr. Salinas this time. But it continues sort of the same theme. What do you plan to do to encourage entrepreneurship and tech innovation here in Hayward? Well, I think we have one of the biggest uh, tech um, uh, think tanks on, uh, in our city, which is Cal State East Bay. And uh, we have a, a thriving science department. Uh, we have, uh, um, and so we have that. We also have a very strong uh, STEM industry uh, in our industrial sector. Uh, we also have uh, all of our high schools are getting STEM buildings, right? Uh, and so, and then of course we have a lot of empty buildings in downtown still. So one of the things that uh, I think uh, will uh, be effective is that if we align in a seamless fashion STEAM activities, both academic and non-academic fun activities for middle school, high school, and college and graduate school where students can uh, participate in maker spaces. Students can uh, 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 fill or go into some of these empty spaces in downtown and other areas in the city and, uh, and launch products, launch uh, uh, new industries and so forth. 
Thank you. Ms. Halliday. Uh, could you repeat that question, sure. please? Um, it's about economic development, just like the previous question. What do you plan to do to encourage entrepreneurship and tech innovation? Yes, I think our students is where that starts, and yeah. we do have students at, at two colleges and in our high schools. Uh, I've been a regular attendee and speaker at STEM Career Day, which is a partnership between our business community, the city, and uh, Cal State Hayward uh, to bring high school students to uh, some of the businesses in our um, in, in our city uh, so that they can see firsthand what's involved in those businesses and learn about what kind of education they need to get those jobs. Uh, there's a wonderful Wonderful program at um, St. Ro uh, sponsored originally out of St. Rose Hospital um, that uh, brings uh, students who are interested in medical careers uh, to sites such as St. Rose that offer uh, them experience. So we need to do much more than uh, of that. The makerspace idea is a great one, and just making sure that our that our uh, young people have those opportunities to learn about the mm. uh, careers that are uh, available out there in the tech world. Great, thank you. We're going to continue talking about young people for the next two questions. Um, what do you feel, if, as mayor or if you're mayor, is your role in working with the Hayward Unified School District? And how do you think the city government can help the school district? And we'll begin with um, Ms. Halliday. There are many ways, and first of all, it is to have a cooperative spirit of teamwork, and I have to admit that relations had gotten a little bit frayed there around some election issues a couple of years ago, but I've worked really hard in the last two years to uh, to, fit, to mend those relations. We regularly meet, our, our, the city manager and I regularly meet with the school superintendent and the uh, board president of HUSD, and we have a local agencies committee where we work together also with the recreation district to see how we can mm -hmm. cooperate together and uh, bring more efficiency to our operations to make things better for everybody. So uh, I have been a strong proponent of the city's after school homework support center and in fact I volunteered in it for a few years um, as well to uh, help the school district by helping the kids do their homework after mm -hmm. school. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Salinas, your thoughts on... Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm a lifelong educator. I'm a professor at Chabot College and at uh, Cal State East Bay, and uh, I married into an education family. My wife is a teacher, her sisters are teachers, and her father's a retired teacher, and her mom's a retired teacher. So this is a question I think about every day, all day, uh, when the sun comes up and when the sun sets. So um, I have a long history with working with our school district. Uh, I have a long history with working with students in our city. Uh, I've, uh, uh, while working with the Hayward Promise neighborhood, we've launched all types of programs for kids and families that have connected kids and families to uh, recreational activities and nutrition activities all throughout the Jackson Triangle and now in the South Hayward, um, the South Hayward neighborhood. Um, uh, I've also um, created a core of volunteers uh, at all of our high schools, whether it's our high schools, whether it's our public schools, our charter schools. Uh, but most of most importantly, what I'd like to do is create a city school partnership around housing for teachers, affordable housing for teachers. Thank you. Um, this is also about youth. Uh, so we'll begin with Mr. Salinas. Activities for youth are crucial in combating misbehavior. So what entertainment type venues or opportunities can we give to families and teenagers as well to here in Hayward well um over the, you know, I grew up in Hayward, and uh, you know, my first, one of my first babysitters in Hayward was, you know, uh, all the community centers at Weeks Park and in South Hayward and so forth. So I think what we need to do is we need to uh, uh, ensure that uh, Hard uh, uh, finishes, uh, all, you know, the redevelopment of all of the community centers. But in areas that I think is most effective, where we can step in as a city, is that the school district does a great job at providing activities when school's in session 180 days. 
It's the other 185 days a year where kids don't have anything to do. So it's opening up our community centers. It's opening up, uh, bring, it's connecting um, you know, students to um, fun activities in, our, um, in the industrial sector. It, and, you know, and not only focus on work. Uh, when we talk about kids in the city, it, it, we connect them to work and counselors. We rarely connect them to, to fun things. And so it's, uh, it's restoring all of the great activities that HARD offers, and we can support that. Thank you. Um, Ms. Halliday, same question. Well, we have worked hard in partnering with the Hayward Area Recreation District to improve the park facilities for kids in our community. I talked a little while ago about our rebuilding of the Eden Youth and Family Center, mm -hmm. uh, but it, as part of that project in Tennyson Park, there is going to be a wonderful new playground called Mia's Dream uh, that's like going to be a little representation of Hayward with a water tower and um, and a firehouse and a um, and an airport and um, and it'll be a great place to play. Uh, we also green. Wood Park out in the in the western part of our city uh, is uh, beautiful and uh, newly you know it's just a great place for kids to pre play and there's one coming uh, off Tennyson and Mission that is going to be a destination park but what I really think needs to be done is work with the business community to bring in business serving uh, recreation for kids like the bowling alley that is being developed at Southland Mall but we need more we need to replace those skating rinks and uh, other things that kids do now rock climbing uh, I supported paintball in the past, but I think that's out of fashion now. But things like that that kids like to do, we need to bring them here. Thank you. Um, this will begin with Miss Halliday. The Hayward Loop continues to be problematic for drivers and business owners who feel that the cars are just passing them by. So do you plan to make any changes to address the problems with well, the Loop? We do. We are working on a downtown specific plan and we are looking at making the loop uh, streets, which are Foothill Mission and A Street, more complete streets to provide, to narrow them for drivers so that the drivers will slow down and to, um, and, and to make them more amenable to pedestrians and, um, and bicyclists. Uh, I have to say that the biggest complaints I hear, in, and especially right now during campaign season when we're going through all the neighborhoods in the city, are over speeding and parking. It is not just the loop at all. It is all over our city. And if I had a magic wand, which I don't and could do anything besides world peace probably, but um, in Hayward here, I would slow people down. Uh, and I just don't know how uh, we need to develop messages so that people really think about how fast they're driving. Parking is also becoming a big issue all over the city. So yes, we are looking at the loop and I think you're going to see improvements when we implement the downtown specific plan that is coming along. So stay tuned and check our website. We're going to start having meetings about that. Thank you. Mr. Salinas, your thoughts? Well, you know, I was not on the council when the loop was uh, passed, and everybody who is uh, supporting or endorsing uh, the mayor that has been on the council who, or who has formerly been on the council all voted for the loop. And um, what's interesting is that uh, um, it, uh, the, it is not a problematic traffic uh, plan. It is a disastrous traffic plan. I live in downtown, and um, all you have to do is on any given morning or on any given evening, look at the amount of traffic cutting through neighborhoods and, and, and speeding, and it, I mean, it's completely unsafe. Um, how do we slow down traffic? How do we slow down traffic in a six lane road driving through our city? Yes, we're doing a lot of stuff right now, but you know we're doing landscape, streetscape, lightscape. We're you know we are doing things to calm traffic down, but what we should have done is not voted for the loop at all. Thank you. We're going to switch gears now for a different topic. Um, what can the mayor and city council do to provide services for Hayward residents to help them become job ready, so that they can have an increased income? and be able to afford to live here. And so we would begin with Mr. Salinas on that one. Well, you know, um, you know, I probably would not have voted 
or I would probably not be so reluctant to support a citywide measure if it went towards paying free community college for Hayward citizens. Instead of taking the money that, like Measure T, for example, instead of taking that and, and, and focusing it on city resources, what I would have done, perhaps, is l listen to the neighborhoods, poll the neighborhoods, and see if they were willing to step up and finance uh, a, um, a community college education for every high school graduate. My goal is for every student in the city of Hayward, by the time they're age 20, that they're graduated from high school, that they're graduated from college with a certificate or a degree, and they have a great job that it's a, that's a sustainable job that enables them to buy a home and thrive in the city of Hayward. Thank you. Ms. Halliday. I think the answer is in partnering with our uh, educational institutions, both, and we are doing that with mm -hmm. both Chabot and uh, Cal State. Uh, with Chabot, we, uh, we have a recent partnership to rebuild Fire Station 6 as a regional fire training center that we will share with them to uh, educate the firefighters. And firefighting is a very technical and very um, intensive course of uh, education that people have to go through. So we're doing that with Chabot. With Cal State Hayward, we have worked with them on the Hayward Promise Neighborhood Initiative grant that uh, they received to administer, but we are very much a part of that. And one of the biggest thrills I've had in the past four years as mayor was to travel to Denver and compete in the All-America City Com Competition by the National Civic League. And we highlighted stories such as one couple's where through their children getting services from the Hayward Promise Neighborhood Program, they learned that there were programs available for the adults and the father ended up earning a certificate and getting a really good job as a result of that. So more of that we need. Great, thank you. This next question is pretty simple. It's funny because I asked it at San Leandro as well. Will you be a full-time mayor or part-time mayor? And we'll begin with Ms. Halliday. Yes, I will definitely be a full-time plus mayor, I think. The job of mayor is really 24-7, not that I don't do anything else during my, my free time, but you're always on, you always have to expect that there will be an event or something that you have to deal with or calls from your colleagues or, your, or the city manager um, about some issue. So yes, I have been a full-time mayor for the last four years, and that really includes much weekend, most of it is nights and weekends. I, represent um, the city on many um, regional boards uh, and, and work with colleagues throughout the region to make our whole region function better. So it's, it's a big job. Um, I am retired from full-time work. Uh, I have the luxury of being able to spend all of my time on being mayor, and I have done that for the last four years and will continue to do that if re-elected. Thank you. Mr. Salinas. You know, when I got on city council in 2010, um, my wife would probably be the best one to attest that I have been a full-time council member since 2010. Uh, there's not a day, there's not a day uh, that goes by that I don't respond to calls. Uh, holidays, I don't, you know, I, I respond to calls. Uh, and so, absolutely, will I be a full-time mayor? Absolutely, just as I am a full-time council member for the city of Hayward. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a professor. I have, uh, uh, I have a teaching schedule that is. Is flexible and I can pull back classes or I can add classes but you know I think uh, these jobs here are uh, are certainly full-time jobs and uh, I am uh, uh, prepared to commit 100% of my time I am prepared to commit every bit of my time for the city of Hayward mm -hmm. thank you uh, mr. Salinas will begin with you what is one of Hayward's major assets that you would like to see showcased more and you would like to see similar things? You know, the city is, uh, we have 150,000 people that live in the city. And one of the greatest, um, one of the greatest joys I have as an educator is that every day I get to walk into a classroom and touch the future. 42% uh, of our city is a student from preschool to grad school. And when I look across my lecture halls, and when I look across my classrooms, and I talk to students, I literally see the future. And as mayor, I want to make sure that all of our students from preschool to grad school have a good quality education, 
that have a seamless education from preschool to graduate school because, because it is incumbent upon us to make sure that every one of our kids that graduates from, Hayward, from a Hayward school, a Hayward preschool, a Hayward school, a Hayward college, or a university, that, they, that they're able to get a good quality job so that they can uh, afford a good quality home and, uh, and, and raise a family and thrive for the next two generations. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Halliday. I think one of the things I love best about Hayward is that it is a city with a very strong arts community, and I love the arts myself. I also think that the arts, uh, in many cases, are what keep kids in school, and so I would couple that with, yes, our young people and their talent. I guess talent is the asset that I would like to promote. We have a lot of it, and recently I supported a program that was adopted by the, uh, board of the, by the HUSD Board of Education. Um, uh, visual and performing arts program for more after-school arts programs for our kids. I have been a longtime supporter of the um, award-winning Mount Eden High School Choir uh, that has competed nationally and statewide and won many awards. Um, and we have uh, we have talented students in all of our schools, and we need to give them the opportunity. And we all need to support them as a community um, in experiencing their, you know, going to their art shows or going to their performances. So I think that. That's um, an area where we have a lot of talent and we need to uh, exploit it. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, we're going to begin the concluding remarks in just a moment. Our candidates will have two minutes to conclude uh, by giving a summation of what they want to say. And then I have a few remarks at the very end. So um, I think we began with Mr. Salinas. So this time we'll begin with Ms. Halliday with your two minute closing statement. Thank you. Thank you. I think that um, uh, experience and teamwork are the two keys to moving this city forward. And those are things that I have been very, uh, I have a wealth of experience since moving to Hayward as a young adult in my community, working as a neighborhood leader, uh, you know, to support things like our homeowners association in the Southgate neighborhood where we lived for many years, my husband and I, um, to support our young people. I was for a long time uh, on the board of the Southgate Swim Club, a wonderful recreational opportunity we have for children. Uh, I have also served on the board of a nonprofit, the Family Emergency Shelter Coalition, which provides housing for, for homeless families with children. Uh, I started my city career in Hayward in 1990 as an appointee to the Citizens Advisory uh, Committee uh, Commission, and I have served on the Planning Commission and numerous other uh, shorter-term task forces in my time. Uh, I was first elected to City Council in 2004 and have worked on, as a member of City Council and the past four years as mayor. I also serve, as I had said earlier, on numerous regional bodies where I get a lot of information and experience. Uh, teamwork, um, it is essential. You don't do anything alone. You need to work with other people. I am so proud to have the support of four of my fellow council members, as well as all of our elected officials from Congressman Swalwell, Senator Wykowski, Assemblymember Quirk, Supervisor Vallier, uh, the, um, our own local firefighters, Hayward Firefighters 1909, the Hayward Police Officers Association, the Democratic Party, um, the um, Alameda Labor Council, the Chamber of Commerce is good government now, and many, many other organizations. And I think that's a reflection of how I work as a team member and partner with all of those organizations and individuals to move this city forward in the best way we possibly can. And I would be honored to have your support on November 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Salinas. I think uh, Ms. Halliday is correct. Uh, experience does count. And uh, I have 48 years experience uh, living in Hayward. I have 48, experience, 48 years of experience living in virtually, uh, or living in many of the neighborhoods uh, in this city. Uh, I know how, I know the families of these, of these neighborhoods, of our neighborhoods. I know the kids of uh, the families uh, in uh, our neighborhoods. They've uh, been in my classroom, I've educated them, and I've prepared them for the future. This election is important. This election matters, not only at the federal level and at the state level, but this election matters at the local level. 
there's many issues at stake. There's issues around building an equitable budget. An equitable, a budget that is equitable and a budget that doesn't target specific populations in our city. This election is about the future of, uh, of housing, how we approach building and sustaining sustainable housing for the next two generations. This election is about what we do about business, how we bring in industry, industry that is relevant to neighborhoods, industry that is relevant to families, industry that is relevant to kids for the next two generations. This election is about building stronger partnerships between city and schools, colleges, and universities. And this, this election is also uh, about uh, building and preserving and, and strengthening uh, seamless activities for teenagers in every single neighborhood. I want to encourage everybody to go vote. I want to encourage everyone to go tell their friends to vote, to tell their families to vote, go tell their neighbors to vote. This election is important, and I humbly ask for your vote this November 6th. Thank you. Thank you. You've been watching a candidate forum produced by the League of Women Voters. On behalf of the League and our audience, thank you to the candidates for joining us and for your willingness to run for this important public position. Thank you to our volunteer crew and to the Hayward City Hall for their role in bringing this information to the public. Uh, they plan to replay the recording of this forum on Friday on your local public access channel 15. For further information on the candidates, measure ballot measures, and to see a copy of the ballot for your precinct, um, you can go to our free website, the League of Women Voters California, at smartvoter.org. Also, we welcome new members to our league, men and women, so please check out our information table out in the lobby as you exit for a membership brochure or other informative handouts. And don't forget to vote on Tuesday, November 6th. Also, I just want to mention, we hope you'll join us for the Hayward School Board Candidates Forum here in City Hall in this same room on Thursday, October 18th at 5.30. It's a motto of the League of Women Voters that an informed citizenry is essential to making democracy work. So thank you all for coming today. Thank you.